Thanks very much. Um, yeah, my name is Matt Kennedy. For don't, those who don't know me, I run the Energy R&D program here in SEAI. I'm engaged a lot with regard to international actions um, from, with regard to technology. So we run the Horizon 2020 with regard to EU collaboration. We do a lot of work in coordinating um, international energy agency work um, across the various implementing agreements. Um, from a technology perspective, but from today, I generally want to talk to you about what we do under the UNFCCC, um, specifically under technology. So my my role um, with regard to um, Ireland and the EU is that I am um, responsible for negotiating technology transfer um, on behalf of the EU under the UNFCCC. <coughs> One of the things that has Come, come out of that with regard to um, decisions in the last um, three years has been the establishment of a technology mechanism. One component of that is a policy arm which provides technology transfer advice to the conference of the parties and the other component of that technology mechanism is the Climate Technology Centre and Network. So this is what I want to talk to you today about and the opportunities for Irish companies, the opportunities for EU based um, researchers arising from um, the climate technology Centre and network. From now on, I'll refer to it as CTCN. Okay, so it's a reduce the words. And um, in general, today um, I have around 20 minutes, so um, I'll do my best to get through it. So, um, with regard to the CTCN, um, where it fits in, there is a an agreement under um, UNFCCC which talks about the stimulating and enhancing the development and transfer of technologies. From a UNFCCC perspective, it's about transferring from OECD to non-OECD or Annex 1 to non-Annex 1. Um, traditionally, so this idea of a north-south collaboration. As countries have become more developed and mature, it's not just north-south collaboration, it's south-south collaboration, and it also involves some south-north collaboration. The intent of the core services from the Climate Technology Centre and Network was about providing technical assistance to countries with regard to technology. So I'm going to start talking about things that are bottom-up, things that are country-led with regard to um, services that could be provided to countries in technology. It's about sharing information and it's about fostering collaboration. So um, with regard to the services themselves, sh I should have let you know that the CTCN has a building under, under in the UN city and the Docklands in Copenhagen. So it is, it, it is established from a consortium agreement with the United Nations Environment Programme and UNIDO, the Industrial Development Organization. So you have effectively three arms of the UN all coordinating together um, with regard to technology transfer, which is the, the first thing that has ever happened. Um, the services themselves, um, it's about deploying, um, Fionn talked about this idea of um, technology and accelerated technology, environmentally sound technology or low carbon technology. These are all referring to more or less the same thing, you know. It's both renewables and it's efficiency. The, um, and it's the integration of both of those with regard to systems as well. From the Climate Technology Centre, it's about removing barriers. This is a big issue with regard to um, uh, technology um, under the UN. It's about enabling uh, informed choices, so providing reliable fact-based um, information, building capacity. So I'm going to talk a little about capacity building and training with regard to technology and creating the right environment for technology to be transferred. For the purposes of opportunities, I'm not going to go through all of the services, but really the first one, you know, in terms of financial scale, the most money goes to number one there, and then um, it, it reduces in money, monetary terms. But when you see with regard to the impact or the numbers, there's a, there's a lot of um, effort going into sharing of information, providing a help desk to support countries. But in general, a lot of the project or collaboration, collaborative opportunities are happening through projects that are identified um, with regard to countries. Now, how does that happen? How does a country, say Mozambique or say Uganda, identify what their projects are? Um, there's normally a, a thing called a technology needs assessment that's done by a particular country that identifies the strengths within those countries, the available resources, and what gaps and what type of projects could arise from that. Often those types of assessments turn into uh, a mitigation action or a NAMA or um, a, an appropriate action for, to um, enhance adaptation or mitigation activities. So the intent then that once an, a gap is identified, 
um, within a particular country, that country will apply for support to, to fulfill that gap through the CTCN. So, so that's in, in theory how it works. So let me talk about it in practice. Um, with regard to the CTC and the services, so it's, a, it's supposed to be catalytic. You know, um, it's country driven. So the country comes up with the idea themselves and, and applies through the chain all the way up to the center in Copenhagen. It's about building stakeholders. So some of the challenges, some of the issues that a country identify may not necessarily be okay, we need to put it, we don't know how to do a feed-in tariff, can you help us provide, develop a feed-in tariff? Or we need some training in this component of how you would do a technology needs assessment. Or we need to deploy a big solar plant within a particular country and they need some assistance in doing that. So it can be a number of different things. It's about collabor collaboration as well. And I'll talk a little about what the network component of this is about. So really, it's about drawing on the experience of organizations across the UN system to help out, to show these things have worked before, they worked in uh, they worked in Fiji before and they were trying to replicate them in a different country, or they worked in Germany and now what we're trying to do is provide that learning and apply that to um, Argentina, etc. And it's all about being responsive and having a quick response to the countries themselves. So these are the services, as I mentioned, it's about technical assistance, sharing information and doing some collaboration. So in regards to technical assistance, the type of opportunities that are there are providing help with needs assessments, providing assistance with regard, with regard to overcoming um, uh, things like assessment, um, overcoming barriers, piloting deployment of a number of different projects, be it low carbon tech, from the renewables across to the um, efficiency. Support policy and planning. So at a regulatory level, working with government if they need some help with regard to the regulatory environment to um, overcome a particular barrier to, that is stopping the deployment of more clean services within that country. Project design, training and capacity building, the development of tools and methodology. So a lot of the things that we're doing across Europe and within, uh, within Ireland. Providing capacity for individuals and organizations. So a training component and making the, ina making the environments appropriate for the countries to deploy more technologies. In terms of the information and knowledge, knowledge management has become critical because you can't be just flying consultants all over the world to try to do clean technology projects. So we're, um, after getting um, a lot of resourcing from uh, European Commission and from Norway with regard to deploying knowledge management so that you can interrogate countries, see where the gaps are that they've identified, see the types of projects that they're seeking, and more or less doing a brokerage with regard to financiers to help them fund these projects and the technical assistance to help them deliver those. So that's in essence what the, um, what the model is about. That resource is about fact sheets and briefs, it's about using data sets and all the different things you would expect with regard to having a technology clearinghouse at a country level. A number of training modules are identified as well. Um, under the UN, the UN th talks about these idea of means of implementation. So they, they would view finance, technology and capacity building as the three means of implementation. One of the points that we would argue with regard to the CTC, and it's, it's doing all three, it has finance, it's about deploying technologies, and identifies that there's a number of skills, gaps, a number of capacity that needs to be developed within those countries. So it's, it's actually doing all three arms of the UNFCCC. The network. Um, there's a number of, or the intent is to stimulate public-private partnership. You know, 99% of the projects that are funded in, in Africa and Latin America are, are financed by the private sector. So it's about stimulating that engagement with the private sector with regard to the projects. So um, the, the whole idea is to build a network of organizations that have the capability to provide some advice um, on these various things. And I'll talk about the types of organizations that are within that network. Before we go to the network, it's how, how does a country stimulate um, a request with regard to assistance and need for a collaborative opportunity. The, um, there's a, a, a stream called the National Designated Entities. So each country has identified a particular person within, be it the Environment Ministry or the Energy Ministry or the Finance Ministry. Um, they, they're all the ones that are shaded in purple at the moment. There's roughly 100, 100 more 
that makes formally makes the request as the focal point. So that person is in touch with, with regard to policy within that country. That, that person I'd, uh, is responsible most likely for the development of a plan or an action plan or roadmap with regard to that country. And they identify the skills gaps or the needs with regard to technology and they make the application directly. So there's, the UNFCCC is coordinating the number of designated entities, but the intent is that Africa will become more filled with regard to public um, purple NDEs. You can see Latin America is already on, on board. So um, with regard to training then, a lot of the countries at the start have identified that there's training needs. You know, So you can see where in the, in the yellow, yellow circles is where a number of training um, events have, have been taking place to train national designated entities with regard to fulfilling requests to um, help, help especially um, LDCs or least developed countries um, make requests with regard to finance. Um, so, with regard to the country, yeah, with regard to the country requests here, so I'm going to go in and give you an example of the type of projects that are being made. Um, you can see roughly where the, um, the request, there's roughly 14 formally submitted. This is only in operation since effectively last year, and we're only getting staff in Copenhagen now. So um, there's a number of requests with regard to national authorities that directly the national authorities have made, and some are coming from um, different types of ministries with regard to um, the national authorities. So you can see more or less the, the breakdown, Southeast Asia, Latin, Amer Latin Central America, and in, in effect, um, Western Africa. So um, there's been three official re requests. The intent is to um, show, showcase best practice, get, a, get three concrete projects that we can show to other countries the type of things that have been done. So um, Chile, um, Pakistan, and Colombia have all submitted requests and are all going to be funded. Um, the type of projects then, so, um, Say, for example, the Chile one is the design of biodiversity monitoring network in the context of climate change. So it's monitoring diversity, it's science to policy, um, it's the cornerstone of their national adaptation plan. So put together a plan, identify a gap within it, make a request with regard to assistance to develop a biodiversity monitoring network. So it's a very clean, simple project. Um, the other potential requests, um, Eco Ecosystem-based adaptation with regard to mangrove forests. Um, biomass biofuel seems to be a significant uh, technology with regard to um, the, uh, especially the um, least developed countries. So some capacity building, things like feasibility studies for the generation of electricity from biomass, biofuel production from waste streams, um, geotropha, etc. In terms of the financial side, um, the design of financial models is hugely um, important with regard to a lot of the requests that are being made, fiscal incentives, um, identification of technology options, um, the new industrial policy approaches. So you can see that it's very clearly moving from the electricity to the competitiveness strand of, of energy policy. So the requests, Okay, they're growing. The, it's effectively this year we, we had it up and running. So we have roughly 23 requests up until the end of October. Um, a lot of them um, are, uh, you, you can see that there's a response plan being required. You know, the intent is to, this is supposed to be a very fast turnaround with regard to projects. So the minute the request is made, response is issued within six, six weeks and the project commences if it's going to be funded. So I mentioned the network, th those types of organizations that provide assistance to the countries if they need to draw on them. So there's, um, there's a number of different activities that are inv involved in this network, a number of different organizations, and the intent is to have organizations in a network within the various regions. So you can see that there's, there's some European um, organizations, the intellectual property organizations, CDKN, all the way across to... Um, sustainable energy in the states through NRAIL and so th there, there's a lot there's a lot of um, REN21 organizations that are um, have it in their remit to provide information provide technical assistance and all these various things to um, developing countries and they're just um, official members of the network there so the potential members then um, 
generally there are 45 potential members identified. We're looking for a regional distribution and we're looking for a quite mix between public sector and private sector with regard to prov provision of services. So there are the criteria, you know, um, we don't really need to go into too much of it, but generally constituted for a number of years. Now finance, um, this becomes a significant issue. At the moment, um, it's effectively government financed. And one of the points that we would say when I was negotiating the mechanism itself is that we wanted to see this as being um, a private sector approach. So you need to set up, you need to build momentum, so you need to get governments involved. So you can see at the moment, um, there's roughly 25 million, 26 million involved in it, um, $32 million. Uh, Norway, European Commission, Denmark, Canada, US, Germany, Switzerland, Japan. So the countries are, are, are getting more on board. There's very close links between this and the Global Environment Facility. Now, um, the Global Environment Facility has allocated 2 million with the intent that we will go in again and look for a 50 million pool of money to help um, fund projects. So the link between, um, we don't have a monetary problem at the moment, we have a projects problem as we're building um, knowledge of, of the Climate Technology Centre. Um, the donor commitments, you can see that um, the sustainability of the financing would become critical. So the link that the technology mechanism has with the Green Climate Fund is very, very um, core. And uh, because in generally 2015, 2016, without government support, it'll, it'll run out. Um, finance will, will run out. That's it. I hope I was efficient enough for you. <laughs> Thank you. So we're actually ahead of time. So straight on to our final speaker then, Richard Templer from the UK 